GOP congressman suing Pelosi over mask rule contracts COVID. Representative Ralph Norman of South Carolina is one of three Republican lawmakers who filed a lawsuit last week against House Speaker Nancy Pelosi over the mask mandate in the House of Representatives. He has now tested positive for COVID-19. Jesus fucking Christ. You were suing Nancy Pelosi over something she was trying to do to keep you safe. Norman tweeted, Thankfully, I've been fully vaccinated and my symptoms remain mild. The announcement came a bit more than a week after Norman, along with fellow Republicans, Representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia and Thomas Massey of Kentucky, filed their lawsuit after they were all fined $500 for not wearing masks on the, on the floor of the House of Representatives. The lawsuit came after the House Ethics Committee upheld the fines against the lawmakers for protesting the requirement by not wearing masks during a May vote. Republicans argued at the time the rules were not in line with guidance by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He might be right about that. Once again, the fucking CDC's messaging has been horrible. For the love of God, I'd hope he's quarantining, but... I, the House is not in session right now. Maybe they're coming back this week because they should have the infrastructure bill. I don't know exactly what's going on. The House is supposedly in recess until September. The Senate the Senate is probably recessing right about now or did in the last hour. A debate on the infrastructure bill. It's expected to pass sometime on Tuesday. And then it goes to the House and they're going to have to debate amendments to it. So I I don't know if the House is going to come back in session. I think that the House has to come back in session sometime in the next couple of weeks because we have a major crisis in this country that needs addressing. Dude, I have demonstrated over and over and over again. Idiots that think they're centrists are right wing. Let me let me show you the fucking spectrum. You voted for Obama. Obama's a right wing politician. You dumb fuck. God damn. Here, this is the political spectrum showing the 2020 candidates. Notice how the Democratic Party is all way over here in the fucking right. You're a right wing dumb fuck. And you're not rational at all. You know nothing about rationing anything. God damn, you're one of the dumbest fucks I've ever met in my life. You didn't even know what a hasty generalization fallacy was. Just in case, just in case you thought I made it the fuck up. One of the most common logical fallacies. And right wingers are incredibly fond of it. God damn, right wingers are fucking morons. I'd vote for Obama a third time if I could. Yeah, there are voters out there that voted Obama and then voted for Trump. Blows my fucking mind. How the fuck? You have to be dumb to do that. You have to have no fucking idea what is going on with politics to do that. You have to be incredibly low information to pull that one off. Speaking of low information... Local anti-vaccine broadcaster dies from COVID-19 complications. Friends say Dick Farrell encouraged them to get the vaccine after he was infected. This comes after months and months and months of him promoting misinformation, like the dumb fuck that he was. But then he encouraged his friends on his deathbed to get vaccinated. Former South Florida talk show host Dick Farrell, known and beloved, beloved by dumb fucks, by fans for his over-the-top right-wing opinions, has died from complications from COVID-19. Your over-the-top right-wing opinions got you killed. Fucking idiot. 
On Facebook, Farrell advocated against getting the coronavirus vaccine and was skeptical of Dr. Anthony Fauci, chief of the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. His recommendations concerning the coronavirus. Friends said after contracting the virus, he changed his point of view. Oh my God, a right winger had something affect them and then they changed their point of view. It's easy to argue for the fucking cops when they're not terrorizing your community. I'm sorry, Scrappy. My apologies. We'll move on. Did I mention he was a fill-in host on Newsmax? And he spent months and months and months filling dumb fucks' heads. I know, Scrappy. I know. He spent months filling dumb fucks' heads with the misinformation. So let's see how that actually manifests itself in our society. We're going to talk to some people who are going to be attending... The Sturgis Rally taking place this week in North Dakota. This is from Don Lemon tonight. We gather in South Dakota for the annual Sturgis. Oh, South Dakota. I got the wrong Dakota. Who cares? It's one of the Dakotas. It shouldn't be two states. It should only be one Dakota. It's a whole lot of fun. It really does. Health experts warn it's likely to be a COVID-19 super spreading event. The CDC. Oh, yeah, Don Lemon. It sounds like a lot of fun. Why don't you ask Harlem Heat what it was like being black men performing in front of the Sturgis Biker Rally? I'm sure you would have a lot of fun there, Don Lemon. 600 cases to last year's rally. But that's not stopping bikers from rolling into town. CNN's Adrian Broadus is there. I'm not high enough for this shit. It's a massive roar that encapsulates our entire valley here. A defiant roar drowning any fears of a pandemic. You know what? I don't think about it. If it happens, you deal with it. I've never taken any vaccines since I was six, so I'm good. Oh, wow. The town of about 7,000 is home to the largest motorcycle rally in the world. And once again... Yep, happening this week. ...the of COVID cases, the pandemic won't keep an estimated... Yep. 700,000 people away. If it were to cancel, that would have a massive ripple effect. That would affect a lot of small business owners as well as... Well, yes. Well, here's the problem, sir, is you're going to let it rip through your town, and those businesses are all going to have to close down anyway. We've seen it all over the country already. People here in my fucking town are having to close down their fucking shops and their restaurants because their staff has all contracted COVID. So wouldn't it be better to not let them contract COVID, especially when they're not likely to have health insurance... And you might be saddling them with long-term effects instead of having your stupid biker rally. Yeah, there are few remaining staff. And that's another thing. I didn't get to it. Like, oh, we have reports where hospital staff are just, they're, they're tired of it. This is preventable and they're just walking off because you're endangering their fucking loved ones. I don't blame nurses for walking off the jobs because they have to keep dealing with idiots that come in that said, like, I didn't think COVID was real. Well, you're dying of it now, sir. I, God damn. How much money you want to bet we're going to see a video of this dude in a month? Like, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have had this event. <laughs> About 460,000 people hailing from all corners of the U.S. attended last year's rally. In a recent study, CDC researchers said at least 463 primary cases, including one death, were reported within two weeks of the 10-day tradition. And another 186 were identified. I thought it ended up being like fucking 60,000 cases like attributed to it. Are y'all concerned about COVID at all? I'm vaccinated. COVID? My wife stayed what? home. My wife I stayed home because she has COVID right now. So she stayed home, yes. Yeah, I already had I already had yes. Are you concerned about COVID this year, the Delta? No. 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 I had it already. I kicked it butt. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a super spreader event there. 
Dr. Shankar Kura with Monument Health fears arising cases and hospitalization starting 10 days from the rally start. There's no easy way to hold a mass gathering event. Uh, so the Sturgis rally, unfortunately, is unstoppable. I think the best way around would be to get more people. <laughs> That's pretty much what he said. Wear mask because um, we don't have mask mandates here. About seven days worth of change. Yes, I get like. Aren't that was one of the things all the right wingers started criticizing people like, oh, why is Biden wearing a mask? He's, he's fully vaccinated. It's messaging. It's messaging. They did it when what the G7 met and all the uh, uh, all the all the leaders of the countries had masks on. That was a good thing to show people that they should also wear masks. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Chances. Carol is packing their bags. Our choice is to leave. We're still of the age where we can leave. We did not feel we had the choice to leave yes, last year, so we stocked up and we stayed home. As this couple escapes the constant rumble, boom, boom, boom. others see Sturgis as an escape from COVID restrictions. But when everyone leaves again... I think what she was saying is that we have like a manufactured short, uh, nursage shortage. We have nurses. It's not just that it will spread here, it's going to spread far and wide. We do feel like the best solution for us in our stage of life is to leave, not be a part of it. Meanwhile, South Dakota's governor, Christy Nome, is expected to participate. Christy Nome is going to be there. Meanwhile, a lot of folks might be wondering, what is the big deal? This rally is happening outside. Well, health experts say the concern is when people leave from outside and go into bars, for example, if they're, they're shoulder to shoulder or on crowded. Well, yeah, I'm sure she has a mask on when she's not on the air. Risk. But you're right about the messaging. It was a big music festival in Chicago. But in order to get inside, even though that event was. Yeah, she took it off for a live hit. People had to show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. That's not required here. And it's a little quiet here right now, Don. That's because riders are a few blocks away. It's okay. I'm with you. I'm with on you. On a 600-acre campground.